All right, everybody, welcome once again here inside the Big Tire Garage for another one of our Q&A sessions from inside the shop. Now, if you haven't uh, already, if it's your first time here, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You get to follow me along as I post weekly vlogs as to what I'm working on in the shop in between when I'm filming some of my TV shows for different outlets out there. I also do these weekly Q&As, and as I've said before, if I choose your question, you hear your name on here, you go ahead, you shoot me an email at bigtiregarage at gmail.com. I'll drop a sticker pack in the mail for you. Currently right now, we're still sending out three stickers. This batch might get the latest sticker, which includes the new shop truck sticker. Now, uh, actually one question that we're gonna start with today, which is honestly not even on the list, and that is a lot of you are asking, well, what if I just wanna buy a sticker instead of trying to get my question answered on the video? And we're working on that. We're working on putting together some sort of sticker merch type site. I'm just kind of choosing what I'm gonna sell. Um, I know the stickers will definitely go on there, but I don't really wanna do like just a pile of t-shirts and hoodies and hats, and I wanna do something special. So I'm, I'm dancing around with a couple ideas of some limited drop shirts and stuff like that. So pay attention, as soon as that comes out, I'll let you know. But without further ado, we're gonna kick things off today with the first question from here in the shop. Here we go. So first question is from, Ooh, I can't even pronounce that name. Moanco.2410. Hopefully I got that right. Here we go. Considering how many projects you have going on at once, what changes would you have made when designing and laying out your shop? Any tips for those about to take the big shop plunge? Ooh, that's a really good question because uh, this shop, we built this, um, gosh, I think it's about four years now, three years, four, I guess it's four years, been in the shop for now four years. Um, for those of you that don't know, this is a Miracle Trust shop. I do not have enough good things to say about this shop. I absolutely love it. The way these Miracle Trust buildings work is it's like a hybrid. It is a metal structure, so there's metal posts and purlins and trusses that basically make up, uh, make up the majority of the structure. And then it's all basically webbed together with wood. And so on the walls of the shop, I have two by sixes and on the ceiling, uh, or the roof, I should say, I have two by tens. That does a couple things for me. Number one, it gives me a true thermal break from the outside to the inside. So for those of you who maybe don't live in the north, and you don't hear that term a lot, what, base, what that basically means is if you think of like a regular metal building, when you uh, put the pole up and then they just roll out like a really thin insulation, they roll it across, every time that insulation crosses that pole and a screw comes in from the sheet on the outside of the building in, it's basically squishing that insulation flat, meaning you have no R value or no insulating factor with that bat of insulation every time you squish it flat. Even though I have these trusses all around the building, the insulation is a true six inch thick envelope around the entire outside of the structure. And I absolutely love it. This place is heated and cooled with two mini split uh, air conditioner heat pump type units. Now I know I'm not in a really cold climate, uh, I am in Tennessee, but we do get cold, and more importantly, we get hot in the summer. And this place will stay 68 degrees year round if I want it, 74, 72 in the winter if I want to get a little bit hotter. So, the structure itself, my suggestion was, if you're thinking of building a shop, I would say absolutely reach out to the guys at Miracle Trust. If you tell them I sent you, uh, I don't know if you get a discount, but they'll help you out. <laughs> That's all I can say, I don't know. I don't know what the discount is, but I'm sure they'll help you out. Um, the, the biggest advice I would give to anybody who's about to build a shop of any size is spend a lot of time on the design process of the shop, planning it out, thinking about where everything is going to go. Even sketch it out like on some graph paper or if you can use, uh, there's some software programs out there that'll help you do like floor plans and stuff. Figure out a way to sort of lay it out, figure out where everything's gonna go. Don't just put the car in there because the car is just part of it. You know, you have to plan for at least five feet around every part of that car to work on it. Then if we're talking about an off-road rig, which I'm hoping that we're talking about, uh, or even if you're doing like classic car restorations, chances are that car is gonna double in size because not only are you gonna have a car, you're probably gonna take the body off and you're gonna have a car and a chassis. So, I would say spend a lot of time design. I wish I'd spent a little bit more time in this shop doing that because I did put my shipping container in the middle of the building to sort of divide up the two sides. And I really do wish that, 
I would have really worked with Miracle Trust on that in the beginning because I ended up putting a mezzanine on top of that shipping container. They could have worked that into my trust system, which would have made building that mezzanine even easier in the long run. So I would say um, if you're just buying a package, whether it's a Miracle Trust building or from somebody else, talk to their designers, take advantage of anybody at that, uh, at that, in, at that basically at that building retailer who can help you with what things you can do. Can you do a mezzanine? Can you do some high shelves? Can you do anything along those lines? Uh, so that'd be my first advice, spend a lot of time designing. I would say spend a lot of time thinking about storage. Um, I have a bunch of shelves in here, they're on wheels, I move them around, they work well for what I do because when I make TV, I have to move stuff around a lot. Um, I like having everything in my shop on wheels because of that, so like all my big fab tables are on wheels. The only thing that's not on wheels is my uh, CNC plasma table. So I would say, think about storage, think about, you know, if you're building a uh, building with a fair amount of height, let's say a 10 foot wall, well take advantage of that height, maybe put a shelf up high, put a shelf up at the at the eight foot mark and then maybe make, just make it, you know, big enough to put a Rubbermaid container on or something. So plan that storage out. Just That's the only advice I can give you is just to plan storage. Everyone says, you know, oh, uh, just build a shop. It's never big enough, it's, which is true, but the truth is if this shop was twice as big, I'd just have twice as much stuff in it and I would still be fighting it. That's just the reality of it. So I think if you plan the storage aspect of it, plan the layout a lot, talk to a lot of people, even go to their shops. Before I built this shop, I actually found there was a local fire station was, which was the exact same size as this. And I actually went over and talked to the guys at the fire station and walked around the shop just to get an idea of how big the space was gonna be. Because this is 44 by 80. Um, if I could do it again, maybe I would have done 44 by 100, but I think this size works really well for me. It's not overly big, so it's not crazy to heat or cool. It wasn't super expensive to build. The concrete is what kills you. So every time you make a shop bigger, it just gets more expensive to make. So I would probably, my suggestion would be to plan out that, plan out not where only where the vehicles go, plan out where all your equipment's gonna go, what equipment you're gonna do, plan for storage. Most importantly, plan for storage. So hopefully that answers your question. Don't forget, send me your uh, address on, at bigtiregarage at gmail.com and I'll get you out a sticker pack. Thank you very much, Mo and, oh, it's Mo and Co. I just figured that out. <laughs> Mo and Co 2410, all right. Question number two. This comes from Mac Cheesy. 8660. Do you like mac and cheese? I love I love a good homemade mac and cheese. Got to have the crusty top myself. You can tell I I like food. All right. I'm loving the Q&A format you are doing now. Here's my question to throw in the hat. I'm having a hard time with getting the holes I've drilled to line up when I'm making sleeves to put bolts through a boxed frame. Every time I try, I end up just far enough off to throw everything off. Do you have any tricks of the trade for this? Thanks, keep up the good work. So, what, uh, what Mac and Cheesy is referring to is a lot of the times when we're working on a boxed in frame rail on a Jeep or truck or anything, um, sometimes we'll drill through and on one, you drill a pilot hole all the way through the frame and then what you'll do is you'll drill the hole to the right size and then on one side of the frame, you open the hole up to say maybe one inch and then you're gonna slide a sleeve in that hole. Uh, he's having trouble drilling through and then he gets the opened up, slides the sleeve in and then Viola, guess what? The hole, maybe it didn't go through the, the frame rail straight, maybe it went through like slightly crooked. So now when you, and you wouldn't really notice that till you go to put the sleeve in there and then wah, 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 can't, it's not gonna line up. So um, first suggestion is an expensive suggestion. First suggestion is to use what's called a mag drill. And I'll throw a picture of a mag drill up here right now and then maybe even so a link to a mag drill in the comments if I can find one to buy somewhere. So a mag drill is basically a magnetic drill press that will basically attach to the side of the frame. And then you'll be able to basically drill through the frame and it works just like a drill press. So if it's on the frame flat, it's gonna drill straight through and it's gonna give you a straight hold every time. Great tool. Nice thing about a mag drill is attach the frame sideways. You can drill up with a mag drill because the magnetic will hold on the metal. 
Problem with the mag drills is usually they're pretty big. They're mainly used in uh, high steel construction and heavy equipment, assembly, or like basically iron work, you know, buildings with I-beams and C-channels and stuff. That's where you see a lot of mag drills. You don't see a lot of mag drills in fabrication. So uh, here is my next suggestion. My next suggestion would be probably what's happening is your drill is getting, if you're a little off center or you're a little up and down, you're not drilling perfectly level. That's what's causing the hole. So. Uh, there is a little trick that I don't know if it's going to work in this case, um, but if you can um, slide a nut over the drill bit itself while you're drilling, um, it has to be a large nut. If you're drilling perfectly straight, the nut won't move. It'll just sit on the bit. If you're angled the bit down, the nut will go back towards the chuck. If you've angled the bit up, it'll slide down towards the frame rail. So that's one sort of like, sort of like really redneck way to sort of level out your drill while you're drilling it. Um, that's not always the perfect way. Honestly, what I would say is, um, man, it's tough. I make that mistake too. I'm not gonna lie and say I do it perfect every time. Here's what I do if I get those holes off. In all honesty, it is drill the hole, drill a pilot hole first. Uh, make sure that measure 19 times. I'm sure you're doing that as well. Um, drill it, drill it out if it's off. The only answer, honestly, is carbide burr. Open the hole up, and then when you open that hole up, you're probably gonna expose some of that uh, sleeve you've put in there, weld it on the inside and on the outside, and then just grind it smooth. It's, it's unfortunately, it's kind of what ends up happening. That's kind of the, the other way to do it. Because honestly, sometimes the, sometimes the mag drill doesn't line up because maybe you have a rocker panel come down and you can't get a mag drill in there. Or maybe sometimes you can't even get the drill in there right. That's the really hard part. So. That's my, those are my three options. Option one, mag drill, if it'll fit. Option two is you can try that nut on the drill bit itself to try to make sure the drill's good and level. And then option three is when that hole doesn't line up, it's get the carbide burr out, grind it out, make it line up with the, with the actual sleeve that you've put in place, and then weld it inside and out and grind it smooth. Unfortunately, that's just how it works. It's kind of the dirty little secret of fabrication. You never get to see that when people make those mistakes, do you? But everybody makes those mistakes. I don't care who you are. Okay. If you have a tip for that, drop it in the comments below. I, I, those are my three tips. If you have a tip for mac and cheesy, tag him in the comments below and let him know. Here we go. Last one is from Jared C5789. Ian. I grew up watching extreme 4x4 and trucks with Stacy David. I was just wondering what was your favorite build from extreme and if you have a favorite build of Stacy David's. Oh, and then he has a second part of his question, which I'm going to cover at the end of this video. So favorite build uh, from my days on my old TV show. Honestly, I, I, it's a toss up, man. It's going to be between Lockjaw, which I still have and the Diesel Samurai, which my buddy Nate at Dirt Lifestyle has. So that's my favorite. I've said that many times. Those two kind of dance back and forth between the two. Um, favorite build of Stacy David's? That's easy to pick. I still remember, um, I obviously wasn't a teenager. I was like a grown up in my 20s, watching trucks and seeing Stacy David build the Wicked Willies. God, I love that truck. That, him building that Willys made me want to have a Willys wagon no matter what. And I slowly worked my way towards finding the right Willys wagon and building my version of a Willys wagon. He had his, which is, was sort of like a resto mod. It was very, very traditional body. Like all the stuff was still there, but obviously upgraded underneath. Um, mine was more heavily modified hot rod slash rock crawler. Um, but that is my favorite, uh, honestly, my, that was my favorite Stacy David build, man. That, that, that thing just, it just got me right in the feels, man. I had to have a Willie's Wagon after watching that. So those are the three questions. Uh, if you heard your question being asked, go ahead. Drop, uh, drop me an email, bigtiregarage at gmail.com and I will get a sticker pack out to you, hopefully, uh, my new shop truck sticker will be in that pack that goes out. It should be here any day now. We're waiting for it. Uh, so now we're on to the last part of the video, which is what I'm kind of answer. I, I get so many questions. Everybody wants to know, where is this vehicle now? And this ties into the last question here. He had a two-parter, kind of cheating, 
but I'm gonna let it slide. He wanted to know whatever happened to the curvy buggy. So the curvy buggy was on my original show, Extreme 4x4, and that was basically trying to build like a rock crawler using all rolled tubing everywhere. Like no straight tubes in the entire car. I just went, I just got in a tubing roller in the shop and I went roller crazy. And uh, roll it all out. We put, I think it had Rockwell's underneath it, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure it was Rockwell's front and rear. I think it was, um, we kind of went back and forth what the engine was going to be. And then we ended up doing a uh, big twin turbo Duramax uh, diesel for it from Fleece Performance. And um, yeah, it was going to have a cantilever suspension kit on it. I even went as far as to try to figure out if I could do curved links, which did not, did not work out. Terrible idea. Don't curve, don't build vehicles with curved links. Links, links should be straight. They should not be curved. Um, so what happened to that vehicle was the same thing that happens to um, a lot, uh, happened to all, we've had this conversation before. Uh, years ago, Extreme 4x4, they did a network change, changed to, it had a new name, when it had a new name and did a network change, the network wanted uh, all new uh, projects. That project was one of the vehicle, was one of the projects that unfortunately was not done and it just had to go away. So what we ended up with that is a friend of mine got the chassis. Uh, he ended up uh, finishing it, turning it into basically just a Southern style uh, rock bouncery type thing. He didn't take the diesel. The diesel actually went back to fleece performance. Uh, fleece because it was basically, it was, that was his motor. We we're just using it. Uh, went back to Fleece Performance. I don't know where he what he did with it after that, but he had it at his shop and he was basically going to probably put it in some pulling truck because that's what they do up there and where Fleece is. So uh, that's where that vehicle went. Uh, the chassis did get turned into a crawler. It just didn't have that big diesel engine underneath the not hood because it went in the back. And uh, that the whole cantilever suspension idea, um, the new owner didn't do that. He just went with standard uh, shock on axle kind of design, which was kind of a lot simpler. Um, that was one of those cars, and uh, I'm sure this has happened to you guys building stuff yourself. When you start down uh, building a vehicle, and then you end up just like, oh, I want to do this, oh, I want to do this, oh, I want to do this, oh, I want to do this. And that snowball happens, and sometimes those projects, they just get out of control. And uh, sometimes it's better to just maybe rein back some of those ideas and just maybe save one crazy groundbreaking idea for this project and then maybe one other crazy groundbreaking idea for the next project because that thing just had new everything in it. Like no one had done a twin turbo Duramax in a rock buggy slash mud trucky thing, whatever we we're trying to build at that point with four wheel steer on rock wheels. Nobody had done that yet. Um, and then on top of that cantilever suspension and just, it just compounded. It was, there was so much work to do um, and we were trying to get it done and then we had the, the show change. So that's where it went. It just kind of lived on a new life, a different way. So once again, everybody, thank you so much for the questions. If you are enjoying these Q&A sessions, please do all those things. Give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends to go ahead and, and watch these and uh, we'll have more next time from here inside the Big Tire Garage.